Good morning. Welcome to Life in Christ Lutheran Church. The peace of the Lord be with you. The psalmist invites us in Psalm 66. Shout for joy to the God, all the earth. Sing, to, sing the glory of his name. Give him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is it, your power, that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. We pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you in prayer, praise, and thanksgiving, we ask your spirit to guide us as we worship you in spirit and in, in truth. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Life in Christ Lutheran Church as we <coughs> complete the season of Easter, the seventh Sunday of Easter. Over the course of the week, the church historically celebrated the uh, ascension of Jesus into heaven, and so we'll, we'll have that in our worship service this morning, as well as continuing the joy that we have uh, from the risen Christ. A warm welcome to all who are in worship this morning. If you haven't already done so, there's a, a white card like this in the seat back in front of you. Please take a moment to, uh, to fill that out. Members, you kind of know what to do with it. But uh, guests, uh, if you don't mind sharing some information. And then at the bottom of either side, uh, there, is, um, there are 
uh, some lines there for a prayer request. If you have a special prayer request um, that you would like to submit. As we gather in worship this morning, uh, we don't like to suffer. I think that pretty much goes for everybody. Uh, in fact, there are times when we feel the slightest pain, uh, we start to feel uh, like we are being persecuted. Uh, we would much rather have God shatter those we perceive to be our enemies than deal with anything that resembles suffering or anything that's hard or difficult. When God deals with our enemies, then we will sing God's praises, of course. But sometimes life is hard, and sometimes it's hard because we're Christians, and our adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. And St. Peter talks about that in our epistle lesson this morning from 1 Peter chapter 5. Uh, Jesus also once said, Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. From Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says those words. This same Jesus prayed for you and I, that our Holy Father would keep us in his name. He knew suffering, and he is now experiencing glory. Now, when we suffer because of our Christian faith, we share in Christ's suffering. And because he suffered, died, and rose again, we too will share that experience and join him in his glory. Uh, as we begin our worship this morning... Uh, if you've had a chance to talk to Dave, he'd let you know that we're starting with a new opening hymn. Uh, it's hymn number 494 if you want to follow uh, in the hymnal in front of you. Otherwise, it's certainly posted up on the board. It's pretty easy to sing. Uh, so let's join, uh, rise, and sing. Uh, the Lord Ascends in Triumph. God has called us to worship this morning, and so we begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. 
Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Friends in Christ, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all of your sin. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted and triumphed far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but... Send us the Holy Spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father. For you live and you reign with him in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation, please be seated. We continue with our first reading this morning. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Acts 1. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James and the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women, and Mary and the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers, the company of persons was in all about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which is the Holy Spirit spoke, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in his ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. 
and it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, Akeldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, may his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, becoming from the baptism of John until the beginning when he was taken, upon, taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they went and they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. The epistle reading is from 1 Peter chapters 4 and 5. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For if it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God, and if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to the faithful creator while doing good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking everyone, someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, out of honor for Jesus, who is the Christ, we rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, 
Glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me. They have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. <clears throat> All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. The congregation, please be seated. We continue with our sermon hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, for indeed you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know about you... But it's hard for me to believe that Easter was seven weeks ago already. One of the greatest days of the church here, to be sure, as we celebrate Christ's resurrection. One of many of the days that God showed his great love for us, the day that our Lord rose in triumph. The reason why we crown him with many crowns. In excitement, we've greeted each other with words like these, He is risen, He is risen indeed, Hallelujah. As the season draws to a close, we 
kind of pivot from that greeting a little bit. Easter is certainly one of the glorious days of the church year. Certainly in the life of the church, but each year as we celebrate. In our lives, by God's grace, we celebrate all kinds of glory days. Days of joy, both inside and outside the church. Glory days with our families. Remember the days our children were born. They were running around the house. Birthdays. Graduation. You graduated, right? Yeah. (laughs) Sydney's pretty proud of that. Yeah, she should be. It's a great accomplishment. Other other glory days uh, involve graduating from college. Sam over there in the corner. The day we're married. The day we have an anniversary or life milestone. We remember Gloria days when the entire family is together for a reunion or party or similar function. And those days are important because they provide us an opportunity to reflect on God's love. God's grace, God's providence for us as we just feel that communion togetherness by design. And as a congregation of God's people, we also have glory days, don't we? Say yes. Yeah. What are some of those glory days? When we closed on the property to buy the house, when we built this building, because we outgrew the house. Some of you remember the building project just a few years ago where we built a Christian Life Center, dedicated that. All these glorious days of working together to get things done in mission and ministry as life in Christ grows. We're still emerging out of this COVID pandemic, but God continues to bless us with baptisms and confirmations and weddings. These are just some of the many glorious days of life in Christ Lutheran Church, and there are many to come. Today in Acts chapter 1, Luke tells us the account of another glory day. It's the day of Jesus' ascension. In our gospel from just a couple of weeks ago, our Lord promised that he was going to prepare a place for us, and he will return, and we focus on trust. Ascension Day is another great and glorious day. Our Lord went up to heaven to be seated at the right hand of God. It's also the day that he sent this newly commissioned church to accomplish the task of spreading the gospel to the ends of the earth, because he has indeed prepared that place for us. He went to the cross and rose from the tomb. I think our graduates have certainly been there recently. We've all been there. It was Friday. All the homework for the week was due. We crouched in the back. Little Billy was praying that somehow an act of God would occur and keep his teacher from calling for his homework. Unfortunately, his name was called. God answered that prayer with a no. He sank deeper into his desk and sheepishly said, I forgot. Did that ever happen to you, Sydney? You never forgot to do your homework? Freshman year you did? You grew out of that quick, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we forget. God places a lot of importance on remembering. But remembering is hard. 
The concept of remembering occurs over 150 times in both the Old and New Testaments. And on many different occasions, God speaks to his people, telling them, remember what I have done for you. Remember who I am. Remember who you are. Remember how you were slaves in Egypt, but I freed you. Remember how I fought for you against your, mem- your enemies. Remember the covenant that I made with your father Abraham. Remember, remember, remember. But time after time, God's people forgot. They would forget how God led them out of Egypt, so they made the golden calf. They forgot his commandments and they bowed down to worship false gods like Baal. In Exodus, they forgot that God was with them and they complained that they didn't have any food or water. They forgot that God gave them everything that they needed. So they would look to themselves to get what they wanted. Even in Judges 2, after God's people had entered into the promised land, the very next generation grew up and neither knew the Lord nor what he had done for Israel because they forgot. And we do it too. Sometimes we forget who we are in Christ. Sometimes we get so caught up in the moment and what lies immediately in front of us that we forget what the big picture is to look like. Sometimes we forget that we're marked as ones redeemed by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and we feel unforgivable, like we don't belong. Sometimes we forget that we are not our own. We were bought with a price. That forgetfulness can be played out in ways that we treat others. We fail to love our neighbors as ourselves. And in other places. It's played out in our lives when we doubt that we truly are forgiven because our sins have been paid for. Sometimes, like Israel, we forget who God is. That he's loving and gracious and walks with us through suffering. Shaping us, molding us, equipping us, even carrying us. God puts people in our lives to take care of us, and he puts us in the lives of others to take care of them. And when we forget who we are as Christians, we forget who God is, and we become guilty of not putting him first. Our lives begin to unravel accordingly. But there's one thing that we have as a constant reminder. We worship a God who doesn't forget. Now that may seem unpleasant, but here's what it really means. Our God never forgets that you are his children. Our God never forgets that he paid for you and purchased you by the blood of his son Jesus God never forgets to provide you with everything you need sure there are times where maybe we we start to wonder because we lose sight but God never does he always comes through in every situation regardless of the circumstances although we sometimes Forget that we are forgiven. He sends us reminders. Every time we come face to face with the cross of Christ. Those sweet words. Hear them again. Your sins are forgiven. This is a place. Where God in Christ takes our sins and forgets them. Because they're covered by the blood of Jesus. It's the only thing he forgets is your sin. Because they're paid in full. Destroyed as if they were never there in the first place. We are reminded each week as we hear those words. Assuring us that his grace is absolute. St. Peter in our epistle lesson this morning tells us to clothe ourselves with humility. Humility. And he does so because 
Clothing ourselves with humility helps us to remember who God is in our lives and, and what he has done for us. Because undoubtedly, and you know this to be true, we occasionally encounter hardship. Clothing ourselves with humility helps to give us a proper mindset as we receive God's grace. As we share the good news with those around us. Clothing ourselves with humility helps us to see these glory days and appreciate them for what they are. Gifts from God to us for sure. When it comes to glory days, we love those things. So does the God we worship. And the most outstanding thing about these glory days is that God often makes them out of trying and frustrating, horrible situations. At Christmas, God took an unwed pregnant teen and made her into the mother of Jesus. That's a horrible situation. In John 6, God took five loaves of bread and two fish and fed 5,000 hungry people not counting the women and children. So it was more than that, right? On a Friday we now call good, God took the wrongful, brutal, brutal murder of his son, gave you and I the forgiveness of our sins. And on the first day of the week that followed, God took sorrow and fear and gave us excitement and joy. The prospect of life eternal, for Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And on that glorious day, he triumphed over the grave. And you and I will too. You and I will too. Our adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Peter reminds us this morning, and he uses all kinds of tactics to do it. St. Peter calls us to stand firm in our faith. Remember who we are in Christ Jesus and the reality that in this life there are times when we suffer because everyone suffers for the cross. Everybody does. But our life isn't pure suffering. After we've suffered a little while, the God of all grace comes to restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish us. Making glory days out of horrible situations. We are invited by the scriptures to cast our burdens onto Jesus when we have them because he cares for us. He will always take care of us without fail. And our Lord this morning comes to do just that. Offering his body and his blood for the forgiveness of our sins, for the strengthening of our soul, for the growth that we have together as life in Christ Lutheran Church. He comes that we would not forget, but always remember who he is and what he's done for us. He comes to take your burdens because he cares for you. And with that comes a peace that passes human understanding that guards our hearts and our minds in him. Until the day of his return. May God grant it. Amen. As we continue in worship this morning, we confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let's rise. We confess, I believe in God the Father, the Almighty the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Congregation, please be seated. We worship God with our tithes and our offerings. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you are a God who watches over us and provides for our every need. As we come to worship you with our tithes and our offerings, Lord, we ask that what we bring will be pleasing in your sight. Use them to accomplish your good and gracious will, the world in which we live. All to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and merciful God, we give thanks for your mercy, especially for the salvation you've prepared for the whole world, through the suffering and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Enable us to walk by faith, enduring all trials encountered because of that faith as we deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that you rule and govern your holy church throughout the world, granting and blessing to all you have called to preach your holy word in order that we would be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word and that we would bear witness to your saving truth. Lord, in your mercy, give health and wisdom and protection to all who are in authority of making, administering, and judging our laws in order that they rule according to your good will and pleasure. Lord, in your mercy, give your comfort to all who are in trouble, want, sickness, peril of death, or any other adversity. Grant courage and steadfastness, especially to those who suffer for your name's sake, that they receive and accept their afflictions in the confidence that you will acknowledge them as your own. Lord, in your mercy. We remember in our prayers those who are graduating from high school and college. We especially pray for our graduates as we celebrate them and their accomplishments. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon them as they pursue further education and vocation. By your Spirit, protect them from adversity. Be a constant reminder that they are your children and that you will never forsake them. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's rise for the practice. <coughs> Friends in Christ, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you've had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and your spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup.
When he had given thanks, he gave it to all of them to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, you are the only Son of the Father. In giving us your body and your blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and to confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Let's rise for prayer. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us once again through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant to you his peace. Amen. Amen. We close our worship this morning in song, a hymn of glory. Let us sing. Please be seated for just a few moments. If you haven't already done so, please pick up the announcements. They're in the narthex by either of the two doors as you exit this morning. Um, just real quick, our uh, Bible study, our adult Bible class continues looking up the lessons in room 23. Pastor Anderson will start that here in just a little bit. Um, um, my wife, Megan, is having surgery tomorrow, and so I need to switch gears for a couple of days and take care of her. So um, the book of Ephesians, which normally meets on Tuesday, we're going to cancel that this week, uh, but uh, we'll be picking that up next week. Um, high school graduate reception is going to begin here in just a few moments. We have a number of graduates. You've seen the, their names in the announcements the last couple of weeks. Uh, Sydney is here, and so is Sam, uh, and so please stop by, grab a cup of coffee, and, and we'll have cake over there, and I think donuts over there if cake isn't your thing, uh, and if those two don't fit your fancy, um, we'll pray for you. <laughs> Tonight uh, is our youth event. Uh, we're going to have it here, 
and we're hosting uh, with, uh, well, it's kind of a joint uh, event with the Apostles Lutheran Church. Uh, and so youth, uh, not many of you here, this service, but uh, that's going on tonight. And Journey Team, sign-up sheets are in the narthex. We've been talking about Journey Teams the last uh, number of weeks. Uh, we've got our leaders in place, uh, and now we want to get you guys to come join us. And so please, if you're interested... Uh, this is kind of a, a small group uh, study thing. Uh, we'll be centered around uh, fellowship this first time. And uh, so sign up in the Narthex if you'd be interested in that. We would love to have you join us. So there's that. And uh, there's a team grandparent meeting next Sunday on the 28th at 9 a.m. And also a summer party for uh, 7th through 12th grade, uh, Sunday, June 3rd. That's coming up. And is that it? That's it. All right. Now, I like to do this when I know that this is happening. I don't always know. Um, but Dick and Patty Mayhew, they come for a number of months in the spring, and now they're taking off for the rest of the year. And so let's pray for them as they travel back to the Midwest. They got to leave a little early this year because of a graduation. So let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for all of our, our uh, winter visitors or snowbirds or whatever they should be called. Uh, they are certainly uh, wonderful partners in ministry with us. And, and I ask especially this week that you would grant safe travel to to Dick and Patty as they head back up north, that you would give them safe passage and an enjoyable summer and return them to us safely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. you bet. You bet. Have a safe trip and don't forget where your real home is. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's all I got. Let's go celebrate. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a great week in Christ.